I love speakers that have their own personality. Personally, I don't think all speakers should sound the same. That's what makes them special. They sound a little bit different. The problem is that some of the speakers that I love that have great personality, well, are kind of expensive. And that's why today I wanted to talk about six of my favorite speakers and less expensive alternatives. Now, obviously, if a speaker is $10,000 and I'm talking about a $1,000 speaker, they're not going to sound exactly the same. But the ethos, the personality, the reason why the more expensive speaker is awesome also carries through to the less expensive speaker. And we're also going to talk about what makes a speaker special to me. What makes a speaker have a different personality? We're going to talk about some esoteric audiophile terms like bright, dark, exciting, dynamic, musical. Probably not going to talk about musical. So sit down, grab a cup of coffee, and let's talk about six less expensive alternatives to awesome speakers. Mm -hmm. Generally speaking, what makes a speaker special to me is its tonality, maybe even the frequency response, how a speaker sounds. Imagine that. How a speaker sounds determines whether or not I think it's special. However, I throw around terms like warm, bright, musical, exciting, dynamic, and not everybody knows what those mean. Warm, so what does that mean? What is a warm speaker? Well, it's a speaker that I think is maybe rolled off a little bit on top, and rolled off on top simply means that if there's cymbals, if there's stuff going on in the treble region, if it's a bright speaker, well, you're gonna be able to hear that. If it's an exciting speaker, for me, you're gonna be able to hear that. If it's a warm speaker, you're gonna be able to hear it, but not as much. And an exciting speaker is the exact opposite. You will hear a lot of stuff going on on the top end. You will hear a lot of stuff going on with some vocals. You will hear a lot of stuff going on with percussion. A caramelly speaker, one of my favorite terms, is a speaker that has a little bit of a lift in the lower mid-range, so baritone. You could call it full-bodied. Now, a bright speaker. Bright for me has a bit of a negative connotation. Bright for me means there's a bit of a boost between the one to 2,000 hertz region, which is where there is a lot of vocal information. And a lot of people think that a bright speaker is boosted higher up, four, five, six, 10K. Simply not the case. So a bright speaker is gonna sound really, really good when you first get it out of the box and you turn it on. But I have found over time, if you're listening to that speaker for a couple of hours at a fairly decent SPL, maybe 75 dB, after a while that speaker is going to get what's called fatiguing, which means it's actually gonna hurt your ears a little bit, or at least put a bit, you're gonna wanna break from that speaker. It's gonna put a little bit of stress on the old eardrums. Now, a mid-range forward speaker maybe doesn't have a boost in the mid-range, but maybe the top end is kind of flat compared to the mid-range, and the bass is also kind of right at the same level. So, I guess you could, a mid-range forward speaker for me is pretty much a flat speaker. And that's the response that a lot of people are after. I don't find those speakers to be exciting at all. But we're gonna talk about a couple of them. And dynamic, what's a dynamic speaker? Uh, for me, it basically me. okay, so let me give you an example. Uh, tube TV, kind of the sound you would get from a TV in the 80s or 90s. It was just like all mid-range, just coming at you. For me, a dynamic speaker means it's got some punch on the bottom, some sparkle on the top, and it can go from soft, to loud. So think of, I don't know, Hans Zimmer. There's That's a dynamic track. So it goes from very quiet to very loud. And a speaker that is dynamic, I think can handle that. Dynamic to me means it's gonna be powerful on the bottom, but yet still have, still be able to resolve the details in the mids and the top end. There are other things that make a speaker special too, including how they look, how they're built. 
because even though that doesn't really impact the sound, well, how they're built, just even though that doesn't really impact the sound very much, it does impact the experience. But enough about all this boring stuff. Let's talk about some more affordable options to really cool, awesome, expensive speakers. The Wharfdale Linton. One of my all-time favorite speakers. It's a three-way speaker. It's also a larger speaker. Kind of gives you a vintage vibe. Looks like a speaker that was maybe made in the 80s or the 90s. Not super exciting, but not super dark or warm either. Kind of in the middle. But one of the characteristics that this speaker has is a little bit of warmth in the mid-range. Big sound stage and a tonality or timbre that is realistic, which means voices sound like voices. I think they're coming in around $1,500. They used to be around $2,000 for the pair, but the speaker, the less expensive speaker, was just introduced this year, and I think that's the ELAC Debut 3. I do think the ELAC Debut 3 is a little bit darker, which means I think the Linton has a little bit more going on on the top end, but the Debut 3 to me has a lot of similar characteristics to the Linton, and it's coming in at a third, if not a quarter of the price. They both can drop bombs on the bottom, and they both can handle playing loudly. Obviously, the ELAC Debut 3 is smaller, but for me, if you're on a budget and you want that Linton sound, the Debut 3 is probably the way to go at about $450. And it might go on sale, hopefully, fingers crossed. The Dolly Opticon 6 Mark II. I got these in and I've been listening to them for about a week. A week. I love them. They're awesome and they're gonna get their own video. You're gonna get to know them a little bit better. And they're actually on sale. So they're coming in around $2,000 a pair, which is not super expensive, but it's also nothing to sneeze at. So $2,000 for a pair of speakers is pretty expensive. But if you want something similar, a similar vibe to the Opticon 6 Mark II, I would put you into the Emotiva X-T1, which come in at $1,000. The Opticon 6 Mark II has a ribbon tweeter on top, but it also has a soft dome tweeter. And then it has two, I think, six and a half inch woofers. The X-T1 has an AMT tweeter, and then it has mid-range driver and then two six inch woofers. What you're getting with these ribbon and AMT tweeters is a level of clarity on the top end that is really unequaled by a soft dome tweeter or an aluminum dome tweeter. You just, in my experience, you just don't get the detail on top, the clarity on top. And I absolutely love that. I don't want to ruin it for you, but I like the Opticons. It sounds like a transformer. I've already used that joke, but the Opticon Prime. That's what they should have named it. Opticon 6 Prime Edition. Autobots roll out. Anybody seen the new Transformer, Transformers 1? If you did, put it in the comments. Was it any good? Try to get my daughters to go to it, but they didn't want to go. Anyway, they're both floor standing speakers. They're both awesome. They both have six inch woofers and stuff. And I think Emotiva is running a deal where you can get 20% off. So actually those $1,000 XT1s are now $800. The Sonus Faba Luminor, Luminor 2 Amateur. How many names do they need for this speaker? Sonus Faber. Lumina 2 Amateurs actually have these on on running desk duty right now. It's a two-way mm, lovely bookshelf speaker made in Italy. Now the uh, alternative is not going to be made in Italy, but it sounds very similar. This is a five and a quarter. I don't know what to do with it now. This is a five and a quarter inch Wufa speaker two-way. Muy pequeño. Slim, it's small, it's awesome. It has a natural tonality to it while still having nice top end. So it's neither rolled off on the top, still punches, isn't in your face forward in the mid range. The alternate, and it comes in at $1,500. $1,500 for the pair. The alternative to that coming in at almost half the price 
would be the Q Acoustics 5020. Same five and a quarter inch, not same five and a quarter, but it has a five and a quarter inch woofer, one inch soft dome tweeter. Very similar in size, looks very different, but what you're getting is the same natural tonality. And in some cases, I actually think the 5020s sound a little bit better than the Sonus Faber Lumina 2 Amateurs. They're both spectacular though, and I love them. Now, another alternative, which is even more affordable, but we're starting to get into some of the limitations of this super cheap speaker would be the Sony SSCS5. Now, you don't have that natural tonality with the Sonys, but they give you a little bit of oomph on the bottom, decent mid-range, and a nice top end. But the Sonus Fobbers and the Q Acoustics, you could probably one run one of each, and you wouldn't even know that you're listening to two different speakers. You could probably blindfold somebody, and people are gonna be hard-pressed to pick these two out. The Klipsch, now this one's a stretch. The Klipsch Cornwall. I'm gonna go with the threes because I haven't heard the fours. Now you gotta take this one with a grain of salt because I'm talking about, I'm giving you this information based on me listening to the Cornwall threes in somebody else's room with somebody else's music, with somebody else's electronics on it. And the Cornwall three is heavily dependent on what type of electronics you have on it, what type of amplification you have on it. But to me, the overall vibe of the Cornwall 3s is very similar. I don't even know what the Cornwall 3s are coming in at. Looks like you can get a pair of Cornwall 4s for five grand, but I think that's more like 6,600 for a pair of the Cornwall 4s new. Sometimes you can find the Cornwall 3s, but the speaker that I think sounds gives you, it doesn't sound like exactly like them, what gives you some of the same vibes as the Cornwall 3 is the new JBL Stage 2. I just listened to them. Actually, they're in my dining room getting ready to get sent out to a lucky winner of those speakers. They have a mid-range that is exciting. It's a little bit forward, but you hear so much detail with percussion, with cymbals, and vocal clarity is just off the charts with the JBL Stage 2. And to me, it has the same characteristics, a bit of the same personality as the Cornwall 3s. The KEF LS50 comes in around $1,300. And to me, that's a speaker I, don't, I never really resonated with. Actually, I, I need to thank that speaker because it helped start the channel. But I know that that speaker has a huge following. People love that speaker. And I think a much more affordable alternative to that speaker is the RSL CG23M. It's a little MTM speaker, and I think it comes in at $150 a piece. So for $300, for one quarter of the cost, less than one quarter of the cost, then a KEF LS50, you're getting a similar vibe. That's a flat, slightly mid-range forward sound. It gives you all of that detail with vocals, but at none of the pesky costs of the KEF LS50. Also much easier to drive than the KEF LS50. So if you're after that sound, if you think you wanted the LS50s but don't have the budget, check out the RSLs. This is going to be another stretch because I've only heard these at shows. However, I have heard the alternative in my house and I've heard the alternative at shows too. It's the Focal Utopia. I think they come in at something ridiculous, like over $100,000. The more affordable alternative, actually kind of looks like them too, is the new SVS Evolution. So if you want that Focal vibe personality now for me the svs evolution also very dependent on what type of electronics you have in front of it but to me those speakers are not only articulate but they're also very track or recording dependent and one of the things i've come to find out doing this for over four years is you can kind of tell a lot about a speaker on how picky it is about a recording and if a speaker is pretty picky about a recording it probably means that that's a really good speaker 
The point I'm trying to make about all of this is that speakers fall in a certain category for me when it comes to their sound and their personality. And even the ones that are super expensive, four figure speakers, five figure speakers, and even six figure speakers, is there is almost always an alternative to that sound for a lot less money. Sometimes it's super hard finding that less expensive alternative because you have to listen to the expensive one, then you have to listen to the less expensive one. I guess that's what I'm here for. Anyway, give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe if you're not subscribed. Share it out if you think this video would be good for somebody else. Thanks for watching.